I'm excited to paint with you tonight. I hope that you've prepped a surface with our ostrich or maybe you bought our paint kit. Either way, maybe you're just watching because you wanna see what crazy happens. Welcome, I'm excited you're here. I love this ostrich. It's been a while since I've painted it, like five, four or five years. So we'll see what happens tonight. Um, I'm currently at our studio and I've got the girls here and they're doing some prep work and they're taking some inventory. So if you see random people just walking behind me, that's what's happening, okay? But we're here to paint. Let's get started. Um, you're gonna wanna start with a flat brush, okay? Um, I like a three quarter inch flat when I'm covering backgrounds, but usually when we're teaching classes, we do this number 12. This is a number 12 flat. It's what we typically use because it's just easier for little hands and beginners. So either one of these will work. Choose whatever you have available for you. Make sure you have some water. Um, I like to have two jars or two cups of water because I like to have the ability to get clean water onto my brush um, if I need to dilute my paint. So I like to have two, like a cleaning jar and then a diluting jar. Um, Sarah's not here yet. Have we located Sarah? No, we have not. I don't know. She's supposed to be joining me. So... <laughs> You guys, it's just you and I tonight. If you have any questions, Drew, you can let me know, yeah? Drew's here. He can let me know. So if you wanna ask any questions while I'm painting, just jump in, ask a question, and he'll shout out to me, okay? Let's go ahead and get this uh, flat brush wet, swish it around in some water, and here is our plate of paint. These are the fun, springy colors I'm gonna use today. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our background, um, which is going to be a really light pink. So I'm going to get some of this pink and mix it into some white. White is just awesome to have because it really helps with coverage. So you'll notice that we use a ton of white. So just be prepared for that. I like to separate it in different piles so I don't contaminate anything and all that good stuff, okay? So now we're gonna paint around our alien looking ostrich, okay? Which, I mean, I'm not kidding you, this is slightly terrifying, this ostrich here. But don't worry, we're gonna make him or her look super cute. We have big plans for this ostrich, okay? So just get, get your paint on there. So my surface is a little bigger than an 11 by 14 inch canvas, which is what your paint kit would be. It's just wider. So if you're like, mm, my background is not that wide, it's not, and that's okay. It's just more, more for me to cover here, okay? We're just gonna get it on there. If your paint isn't, um, offloading smoothly from your brush um, that's a really good indication that you need water in your paint so just dip your brush in water mix that water into your paint and you'll be good to go okay so I'm gonna get up close to my ostrich here but remember we've got we've got some hair this is one hairy ostrich so we don't have to get like right up against our ostrich, just as close as possible. And this big chunky flat brush can be kind of tricky to do that. So just do your best. As we go around this long, this long neck and this fun beak, I really, really love the beak and the eyes of our ostrich friend. They're just so fun. So I'm painting on a mixed media paper. Um, we do that for a few reasons, but I will tell you this, you, some, I get asked all the time, is it easier? Does your paint flow better? I'll tell you what, I'd rather paint on a canvas any day because I get those textures that I don't get on paper. 
Um, and I just personally would paint on a canvas. So I wouldn't say that it's easier. We do it, like I said, for several reasons. But one thing I don't have that you do is those edges. So make sure that you wrap your canvas. We're big fans of wrapping our canvas because we like a nice completed piece to our work when we're finished so that we can put it on our shelf, hang it on our wall, and it's finished and it's beautiful. Once you have your background end, in, end, it's fine, it's been kind of a long day so my English is a little bit off. I'm gonna go around with some white. So I just put a chunk of white on my brush. It still has my background on it. And I'm just going to blend this white around my ostrich and maybe kind of like fan it out a little bit. I really love to add this white. It brightens up your canvas, first of all, but it also just kind of brings the eye and the attention to the subject, which of course is our really fun ostrich. So like I said, you're gonna have the fur or the hair. Do they have fur? Do they have hair? They have hair, okay? Um, so some of this is gonna get covered up. So I like to do a nice thick white around it as much as possible so that when I go to do the hair, the feathers. Guys, why didn't anybody just say feathers? They're feathers, right? When I go to do the feathers, some of this white is still coming through. Now around the bow tie and the eyes, it will already be there because those won't have the feathers. But some of these other places, you might want to just thicken it up so you can see some of it. And to be honest, depending on the age that you are or the artist that you are encouraging to create, you might end up saying, we're gonna skip that part. <laughs> and that's okay too. It's not a big deal. Okay, here we go. We've got that light surrounding our ostrich. Our background is in. I'm gonna wash my brush. I'm also gonna try and flatten out my paper just a little bit so that's another kind of disadvantage um, it does kind of wrinkle up on you so I'm going to pull it flat as flat as I can here keep in mind as we are painting even though it's live especially if you're watching right now do we have anybody on right now Drew we have somebody watching hello um if I'm going too quickly for you you can pause it, okay? Um, I do tend to paint a little bit quickly. So if you're just thinking, wow, this is way too fast, just pause it. There is no harm or shame in that. I'd much rather you go at your pace and really enjoy your final piece than to feel rushed, okay? So pause it. Um, you might also need more drying time than I do, depending on the temperature, where you are, painting and your surface all that so if you need more drying time pause and, and all that good stuff can someone bring me a napkin i totally forgot i forgot a napkin i'm gonna need that so now that we have our fun background in if you have our paint kit of course i should have mentioned this earlier but thanks honey you can probably you've probably already made that um probably already seen that you can switch it up you have the turquoise in there so you could do a turquoise background you can switch the bow tie and the background color make it your own and all that good stuff okay so we've got our background in next we're going to fill in our ostrich so I'm gonna switch now to my number 12 so I can just have a little bit more control and I'm gonna make a gray now, this is a value building piece, and so the gray that we make, that's our darkest feather, okay? That's the feather that's in the shadows, so to speak, okay? So you don't wanna get like charcoal. You wanna, 
unless you want a really, really dark ostrich, okay, which is totally fine. I wanna keep it light. Start with a little bit of gray or black because it goes a long ways. You can see immediately, it just took the teeniest bit for me to get this gray here. Also keep in mind that your paint dries a shade or two darker on your canvas, on your surface, than what you see. So keep that in mind too. Once you have a gray that you're happy with, we are going to fill in our ostrich. We're gonna avoid the eyes, the beak, and the bow tie. And we're just gonna to start to fill it in, okay? And what you wanna do is just stay within those funky lines for now, okay? <laughs> and then we'll add our feathers. But to start, we're just gonna stay within our really terrifying looking ostrich. When we made the pattern for this, it was kind of like, okay, how are we gonna make this pattern? Because of course we always consider the success of the artist, right? How can we make this so that our artists have the most success? And so we wanted to get those main shapes in there for you guys. And sometimes that requires some funky looking patterns, which is what happened here. So if you get into this part of the eye at all, don't stress because that's going to be black. I just like to be as clean as possible for the sake of avoiding any type of cleanup that I'll have to do later, you know. I'm kind of one of those let's go kind of people. We're here, let's do it. I don't like to spend a lot of time on cleanup. All right, so we're going to go around the beak. This fun beak here. And we're going to go down this chin and neck. Just filling it in. And because these are going to be feathers, don't worry about your brush strokes. What direction should I go? Up or down? Side to side? Doesn't matter. This is one of those forgiving pieces that I just love. It was requested so many times as a paint kit. Um, and this year I was finally like, you know what, I'm gonna do it. So here we are. Here we are painting it. And it's super cute for this time of year, being spring and Easter. It just kind of screams all those fun things. Okay, so I've got that in. Now what I want to do is I want to work on my feathers, okay? One thing that you want to make sure of is that your background is dry. Um, typically, at this point in a class, I would kind of walk around and check on everybody, give them time to finish filling in their ostrich, and that would allow their background to dry. If you're still filling it in, pause it. Um, if you're all finished but your background is still wet, just kind of pause this for a minute and allow that to dry because we're gonna put our feathers in and we don't want that gray and pink to mingle too much, okay? All right, let's look at our brushes. I've got two options and I'll be honest, I don't know for sure which one I'm gonna use. I think I'm gonna use this, I believe it's a number eight. I can't really, it's a number six. There's so much paint on these brushes. But I also have a number 10 round. I think I'm gonna do the number six. I'm gonna try the number six first because this is the one that we like to use for our beginner artists. Um, and I'm gonna use this one for the feathers. Now the fun thing about this brush, it's round, um, but if you push on it, if you put a lot of pressure on a brush stroke, you are going to get a thicker stroke. And if you lightly press, you're gonna get a thinner one. So we're gonna use that to our advantage as we put in these feathers. And now directionality is going to matter as we put these feathers in and kind of go around the eyes and around the beak and so on, okay? So I'm gonna get that brush wet, come over to my gray, same gray that I just put on my ostrich here. See how I'm loading with kind of a twist. 
What this does is it closes my bristles and it also forms kind of that point at the end, brings everything to that point, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to curve in these, these feathers around the eyes. Now what I'm gonna do is press on the beginning of my stroke and then pull away, okay? And I'm gonna just keep curving these around the eye kind of, and then when I get kind of to the center, I'm just gonna go straight up. And these aren't gonna be as long in the center as they are around the eyes. Okay, and you can come in and you could say, well, I want those to be a little longer right there or a little shorter, whatever you wanna do. Just remember, every feather should kind of be different, right? different in length. So this guy is just going to look, I mean, this is so funny to me how this guy starts out. He's just not, I mean, this is an ostrich, right? So I curve and then in the center, kind of pull up, okay? So you can see we're kind of getting, oh, that had a little black on it. And you might want to go over it a time or two, depending on how thick you're laying it on there. Or if you want to pull some of these up even further or higher. I like these ones on the sides to be taller. Oh, look, I got some paint in my white part of my eye. That's okay. I want these to be kind of taller longer than the ones in the center, so I'm gonna kind of push them out a little bit, okay? All right, now let's kind of work on what's happening under the eye, okay? Under the eye, we're gonna go down, okay? We're gonna kind of curve these down and then up. So you're gonna kind of get, at the beginning, you're gonna get a little curvy, going down, and then you're gonna flip the direction out like that, okay? Oh, he is funky. He's a funky looking one. Okay, so let's do the same thing over here. So I'm gonna curve out like that, and then I'm gonna start to curve upward. Yes, it's happening. It's happening. He <laughs> is happening. Oh, he's crazy looking. Okay, so right here, it's going to get kind of wild. We're gonna kind of go around and then curve up. So I'm gonna start kind of at the center of the beak and then just kind of go in the direction of the beak. So can you see that? I'm going like up and around and then flipping it up, okay? And I'll kind of just keep doing that, but then they'll get kind of, my brush strokes will get shorter and shorter as we come down until we're just kind of flipping downward, okay? So as we come, we're gonna start to just kind of go until we're going down. Does that make sense? It's really hard to describe what's happening <laughs> with my brush to you, but can you see what's happening as I describe this kind of going, we're going, we're going, and then we're just gonna start just curving until we're curving downward. And then as we come down, it's going to just all be a downward stroke. And this is where it gets a little easier because you're just flipping that down, just like that. All right, so that was a lot and the sky 
is just looking wild, right? He's looking so wild. Um, come back through here if you need to. What you don't want to see, and you can kind of start these brush strokes here too. You don't want to see too much of where the hair, or the, sorry, I keep calling this hair, where the feathers start and that main line of that we put in this cute guy's face where those two happen so if you can kind of thicken it up in those areas if you need to take the time to do that because it will kind of be fighting that pink background to some extent but we are gonna put, we're gonna put more layers. We're gonna do more layers. Remember, this is these are our shadow feathers. So these are the feathers that are in the very back. And we're gonna build on them. Okay. Over the beak, I'm just gonna kind of go in this motion. Okay. I'm just gonna kind of sweep it up and then go over like that. Let's step back, let's see the progress we're making. I think we hit the funky right on. Don't you? I mean, this guy is looking funky. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to work in my ostrich while it is wet, while those gray shades are wet, okay? Mine's drying really fast. I'm surrounded by bright lights. So there's a lot happening. Yours is gonna stay wet longer, which is an advantage for you. Um, when we go to do our white, I'm gonna have to kind of bounce between white and gray. Maybe you're gonna need to do the same. But if your ostrich is still pretty wet, you're not gonna have to bounce between the two too much, okay? What I will say is the goal is to blend in that white without losing the gray. You want the shadow, but you want the light to be in the foreground. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse my brush, even though I will be needing to go back and forth, probably. And I'm gonna get into some white, okay? And why don't we start down here so that you kind of have an idea of what I'm talking about, okay? So I'm gonna put in my white. Okay, now do you see how I'm coming through with my white feathers? but I'm not completely eliminating the gray. You can still see the gray, the gray is still there. I've just pulled my white forward, okay? And you can go over it. You can even come up in your bow if you want, bow tie, because that's gonna be um, painted over and it'll look like it's sitting there, but do you see what I mean? Now we've got our white in front. So that's what we wanna do on the whole thing, okay? So let's just keep moving. Now that I've shown you kind of what to do down here, let's go ahead and go up. Let me get some water on my brush again. Let's go up to our very top here, all right? And we're gonna go around these eyes. And I'm gonna pull, and I'm gonna go straight, and I'm gonna leave some of my shadow there, okay? But I'm bringing my brush further down. You can see this time I'm coming all the way to the eye and I'm bringing that brush stroke right down here, right? And we, it's all gonna kind of meet in the center right here and then we'll work on that a little bit in a minute, but you can see now I'm pushing, pushing the gray in the background, right? And again, go over it more than once if you need to, so that you can get that bright white in some places, pull some of those strokes up further if you need to. You know, one thing with painting, 
because you're not going to get it perfect on your first brush stroke. And I think that sometimes people are like, just tell me how to get this effect. Well, it's not going to happen with one stroke. You kind of have to play with it. Okay, so now we're going to come over here. And we're going to go around our beak like so. This is why I like to do it when it's wet because these areas will blend a lot better in into your paint when that gray is wet. Okay, so it's a little trickier to get the same effect if you're already all dry. So right around here, okay, I'm just going to paint back and forth like this. And kind of come up and then down just think what direction are my feathers going okay I want to find that direction got that little area where we're gonna have some fun like highlights and stuff happening okay so we're just gonna keep working on it we're not done don't judge your poor ostrich yet. I'm gonna flip all these out. And then we're just gonna start to go down. So kind of pay attention to the direction of my brush here. I'm not pushing too hard on it either, which is also important. You don't want to push too hard. You want to kind of have that nice um, feathery pressure. Okay. Okay. It's coming together. You can see that layer. We're going to go one more time and it's going to be brighter white because it's going to be white on top of white. Right now that layer is bleeding into the gray a little bit and so we're not getting as bright a white as we want. So this last one we're going to do a little less of but it's going to be essentially our very brightest. Okay, so here we go. And this is when if you need to pull in some of your original gray to really get a good blend, then do so. I'm going to kind of go around the eyes and then push it up. We're going to come through with some black as well, which will kind of help define a little bit right now. You see how I just kind of do these little rainbow motions with my brush right there in the center where I kind of want some details to happen right there later. I'm going to look up at the screen to see what you're seeing. Okay, here we go. And I'll kind of come around, go down like this, and just feathering these fun things in. We're going to want to kind of give this guy a chin too. Brush pressure is super, super important here, okay? You want to remember that as you're going along. Really remember your brush pressure. Okay, if you need to at any point, you want to pull in some gray and kind of bring some of that character back. You can do that too. So just trying to get some blends here. Okay, and you don't want anything to just look like one 
harsh brush stroke. I kind of I kind of like it. I kind of like where we're going. Sometimes I have to step back, kind of see. Let's let this be for a minute, and if we need to go back and make any changes, we will. But I think it just needs a minute to dry. It's looking funky. That's what we wanted. All right, washing the brush. Making some good progress here, you guys. This thing can go in really fast after you get those feathers in. I'm gonna go back to my red flat and I am going to put my beak in, okay? So I've got some deep yellow here. I'm gonna add some white. Always adding white, guys, always adding white. And then I'm going to put in my beak. The more white, the more coverage, okay? Keep that in mind because yellow can be pretty transparent at times. Remember this beak is going to be outlined so you know don't spend too much time stressed about your clean edges. Although who am I kidding? That's what I do. I stress about those edges. So I'm reminding myself as much as anybody else here. Get the yellow in, just like that. It's coming together. Okay, remember, if I'm going too fast, pause your video. Pause, pause, pause. Okay, so we've got our beacon. I'm gonna go ahead now and put in my bow tie. Again, I'm going to grab a chunk of white over to my turquoise, lighten it up quite a bit, actually. And I'm going to fill in this bow tie. There's something about pink and turquoise next to each other that is just so amazing to me. I love pink and turquoise. And there is, you know, they are opposite each other on the color wheel. So it makes a lot of sense that they look good together because that means they complement one another and contrast one another. Fill in your bow tie. Oh, he's looking as funky as I remember. It's all coming back to me, creating this piece in my basement and just smiling the whole way. All right, wash my brush. Let's get some black on there. We're gonna fill in the eyes because we are just getting close to those details now. Got my black paint. Okay. Let's go ahead. These are more oval than circle, so keep that in mind. Come around. You want to kind of keep, well, I like to try to keep the white portion of my eye completely paint free during my painting. Of course, I didn't do that. I got some gray in there, and I'm going to have to touch it up but typically I like to keep it clean because it just kind of avoids a step since your canvas is white see now my eyes gonna grow a little bit because I got a little bit too picky about my oval you know so remember that just know when to like it's good it's good let it go let it be all right Here we go. This one I was able to keep paint free on the white part. I mean, it's not a big deal if you have to touch up with some white paint. Love me a good, a good circle or oval that just continues to grow. And you're just like, stop growing. Stop growing. Now we've got this guy is lower now. See, because I 
you know, I see that. I don't know if anybody else will, but I do. And it's just bugging me. Whatever, he's funky. He's, he's weird, so I'm going to embrace it. All right, let's see. Where are we at? Let's, I'm going to just grab a detail brush and clean up my eye here with some white paint real quick so it can dry. So if you need to do that, this is a good time to do it. But there we go. Oh, so fun. Okay. Let's add some light to our beak real quick. So make sure your brush is really well washed because it just had that black in it. This is where I really like to have the clean water so I can just jump over there and check it out. Make sure that it's... This ostrich does not lack for lashes, that's for sure. It's got lashes. Okay, perfect. So let's just keep going here. We're going to add a few little lines in here as well. And then we're going to outline our entire beak. Really make sure that your paint is diluted for this. It will make the biggest difference for you. If your paint isn't diluted, you will be fighting these lines the whole way. So really take the time to dilute your paint. Up and around. And then we've got that frowny face kind of shape going all the way across. Just like that. All right. We're almost done, you guys. Let's keep going. Just another reminder to pause if you need to. I'm going to add a little white to my black. These lines up here are a little too dark for me. So I might just, I think I just want to go, yeah, a little lighter on these. And then we want to do some little chin, little, little chin lines here, okay, like so. And keep going, kind of indicating where those feathers are going. Same down here. Okay. And of course, let's go around our bow tie so that we have a nice cohesive piece. And I like to do kind of a faded line with this, meaning I don't go around the entire thing. Just a little bit to indicate that look, we're all sort of got that black, hint of black throughout. All right, looking awesome. Let's go ahead if you want to and put some dots on your bow tie. I kind of liked this. I'm gonna use the bottom of my brush to do it. But real quick before I do that, I'm gonna put some water on my brush. This is a flat. And I'm going to put some white on a corner. So I've got a damp, flat brush. And I just want to highlight this bow tie before I do any sort of dot on it. Because I can't do this while my dots are wet. So just a quick highlight there. Now let's flip the brush over and do some dots. These are just fun little dots adding a pattern to the bow tie. But if you like a nice solid 
nice solid bow. Or maybe you want to do some stripes. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to do some of these dots a little bit bigger, some small, just like that. I don't think I'm going to put any in the like shadow part, you know? All right. Awesome. Look at us go. We are just about done. Let's put a nice reflection of light in each eye. So I'm going to get the bottom of my brush, swirl in a nice big dot at the top of each eye, like so. Again, hopefully if I'm going too fast, you've paused it. We had a few technical errors. errors. <laughs> this class is live so we lost a connection and I just kept going here so if you kind of experience that little blip you know why I'm gonna add some white to my detail brush now and I'm gonna put in a stroke here nice highlight in the eye okay take this little brush Add any light anywhere you want, any indications of any feathers or anything you want to do to add to your ostrich, but this guy's looking funky and fun as can be. I'm going to go ahead and sign my name now. So if you're finished, you should definitely take the time to sign it. Tell the world that you painted this ostrich and you're proud of it. Thanks for joining with me through all the crazy. I would love to see pictures of your ostrich. So if you have a chance to send them to us on social media or tag us, that would be awesome. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and hopefully I'll be able to paint with you sometime soon again. Bye-bye guys.